genetics and overview genetics is the study of how living things receive traits from their previous generation these traits are described by genetic information which are stored in a molecule called as dna some of the pioneers in the field of genetics were hippocrates hippocrates theory is known as bricks and mortar theory it states that materials consists of physical substances originating from each part of the body and it is concentrated in the male semen which develops into a human within the womb of a female he believed that the physical characters are acquired for example he says that a weight lifter will have a large biceps so also his child or his offspring will also have a large biceps which he would have passed on through his sperm aristotle criticized the bricks and the mortar theory of hippocrates he said that for example if a bald person had a child it doesn't mean that the child would be born bald but maybe later on when the child grows up he may or may not be bald and thus the brick and mortar theory of hippocrates was discarded Aristotle thought that the males produce a highly purified reproductive blood containing the nutrients from all body parts. Female also produce reproductive blood, but this blood is impure. The two reproductive blood, that is the pure blood of the male and the impure blood of the female coagulate in the body of the female and they form a embryo. due to the purity of the reproductive blood the contribution of characters by the male is more than that of the female this theory is known as the blueprint model theory of epigenesis this theory was proposed by a german biologist ulf his theory stated that the egg and the sperm are undifferentiated cells the differentiation into various organs or parts takes place only after fertilization in the zygote resulting in the development of the adult tissue and organ this concept is universally accepted the theory of acquired characters which was proposed by the french biologist lamarck states that a new character once acquired by an individual shall pass on to its progeny as said by the hippocrates it means that if a man develops a strong muscles by exercise all his children would have a strong muscle but later on this concept was totally rejected by westman Oscar Hedwig He studied about sea urchins he proved that fertilization occurs due to the fusion of the sperm in the male and the egg in the female he recognized the role of cell nucleus during inheritance and chromosome reduction during meiosis theory of pangenesis this theory was proposed by english naturalist charles darwin it states that very small exact but invisible copies of each body organ and component called germules 
are transported by the blood stream to the sex organ. These gemmules are assembled in the gametes. After fertilization, these gemmules move out to different parts of the body, resulting in the development of respective organ. The theory of germplasm. This theory is being broadly accepted by most of the biologists, thus disproving whatever the previous theories were propagated. This theory was advocated by August Wiesmann, a German biologist. He said that the body tissue consists of two types of cells, that is the germplasm and somatoplasm. The germplasm refers to the reproductive tissue or cells which can produce the gametes. Somatoplasm includes all other body tissue except the sexual reproduction, that is the germplasm. Apart from germplasm, every other cells are known as the somatoplasm. Thus, Transmission of characters from one generation to another takes place only through germplasm. Any changes that occurs in germplasm will lead to a change in the next generation. He conducted a famous experiment in the mice. You can look at this picture. What he did was he cut the tail of the mice and then there was a fertilization between the two mice without the tail. But you can see that the offspring which was born had a tail. And next again he cut this tail of this mice. Again there was a cross fertilization. But each generation he carried out this experiment for 20 generations. And in each generation he found that the offspring had the tail which indicated that Tail has nothing to do with the germplasm. It is under the control of the somatoplasm. If at all there was a change in the germplasm, even the offspring would have had the change. But that was not the case. So this is known as the theory of the germplasm. And it is the most widely accepted theory. Coming to the Mendelian genetics, Gregor Mendel, he systematically recorded all his results. Okay, He had studied about statistics, physics and biology. And today, whatever we call gene, he called it as factors. So he knew the concept of gene today, what we are talking. But only he, what the, he coined was that of the factor. So he carried out this experiment on the pea plants that was in the year between 1856 and 1863. As I said earlier, he had a good knowledge of biology, physics and statistics. So we shall deal about his studies later on in the coming video sections we can look into it. Though most of Mendel's work was well documented, it almost lost the track until 19,000 it was rediscovered by three botanists independently. That is Hugo de Virus, Karl and Eric. So all these three gentlemen independently rediscovered Mendel's work in the same year a generation after Mendel published his papers. So when Mendel published his papers, his works did not receive much appreciation. So almost whatever he said was lost. But in the year 19,000, these three scientists independently worked on it and they came across the Mendel's work and they gave the thought that, okay, whatever Mendel had published, that was right. This was again the rediscovery of the Mendel's work. So today, whatever we are studying, 
about mental it is shown that whatever mental proposed those theories were true in 1905 the term genetics was coined by the british biologist william betterson so the term gene and genotype all this came into surface in the year 1909 In 1910, U.S. scientist Thomas Hunt Morgan discovered sex-linked trait while studying the fruit fly Drosophila. So, the wild variety, that is the original variety of the Drosophila, were red-eyed, whereas some of the Drosophila were white-eyed. That is, they were mutated, and this mutation occurred in the X chromosome. so that is why we say that the trait for eye color is present on the x chromosome and this was the first time it was discovered that the sex chromosome or the x chromosome was related to some of the trait in 1951 clear x ray diffraction images of dna were captured by for the first time by the researcher Rosalind Franklin and in 1953 building on franklin's work that is you can see here the picture of x-ray crystallography of the dna so based on this picture biochemist james waston francis crick they built the theory which is known known as the famous double helix structure of dna and they won the nobel prize in the year 1962 and this award was also shared by wilkins so this is the picture of james waston and francis crick In 1986, Carey Mullis developed polymerase chain reaction, for which he again won the Nobel Prize. This instrument, polymerase chain reaction, allows researchers to produce many million copies of DNA molecule in just few hours. In 1990. the international human genome project began with the goal of sequencing the entire human genetic code subsequently gene therapy is used successfully for the first time to treat a 4 year girl with a rare hereditary immune disorder known as adenosine deaminase deficiency in 1994 biotechnology had moved quite far away and was very well known for the first time flavor saver tomatoes were genetically modified to have a long shelf life this is the first genetically modified product and which went on sale in us this gm tomato puree also went on sale in uk in the year 19 96 so these were some of the few scientists whom i have mentioned who contributed to the field of genetics